Hey everyone, I'm here today to talk with you about how to work out in line with your feminine hormone cycle. Anybody who has female biology needs to work out differently to men or with their male biology. Why? Not because we're delicate flowers and we just like can't do all the things. We can do all of the things. It's not that. It's that there are particular things happening within the month of our hormonal cycle. There are big shifts taking place that if we do not honor that in the way that we both eat, move and rest and work, then we're going to experience less energy, greater PMS symptoms, we're going to experience possibly weight gain or feeling like we're doing so, so much, but why aren't we maybe losing weight like we want to, if that's your goal. Um, yeah, just more dull, more, more feeling like everything's a little bit harder. Why is that though? Why is our hormonal cycle needing something different from us than what we've been sold in terms of this workout's the one that will make you in the best shape. This is the thing that you should do to, you know, um, yeah, like live your best life physically, mentally, emotionally. And if it's not taken into account that we have a very unique and very sensitive hormonal cycle, then it's actually something that's been perpetuated within medicine, within popular media, mostly because it's not talked about, mostly because it's unknown, and that's we are just like men. Are we as capable? Are we as powerful? Are we as amazing? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Do we need something different when we work out? Yes, 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 yes. Why? All right, let's talk about why. Basically, and I've been learning this, I've been into some in-depth study in terms of hormonal rhythms and especially balancing hormones in my cycle. You can look back through my older videos for that um, because I've experienced hormonal imbalance. I've been learning a lot, especially from, her name is Alyssa Vitti, and she is the founder of Flow Living. She has the cycle tracking app, which is like my favorite in the world. By the way, this isn't sponsored at all. Um, my favorite in the world app called MyFlow, F-L-O, not a W at the end. And she talks about, this biologist talks about how we have a 28 day hormonal cycle generally 28 day it could be longer or shorter if it's above i think she says 32 days then there's imbalance happening if it's below 26 days there's an imbalance happening generally it's around 26 to 32 within that time frame if you're healthy and that cycle is very different to what the male biology cycle is which is a 24 hour cycle so after 24 hours his hormones reset do the same thing again now we have that to some degree in terms of our circadian rhythm, but we also have an entirely different cycle and body clock. Ours is called the infradian rhythm. And with this infradian rhythm, so much of our body goes through drastic changes. For example, our brain changes the way that it's like the capacity. I think it's, I don't, I don't actually know whether it's like physical, I know it's the, the type of focus and what's lit up in your brain. I can't tell you more than that, but apparently it's like your brain will go under, undergo changes 25% throughout the cycle. Your metabolism changes. This is what's linked to working out especially. Your mood, I mean, you know that already, you know that. Your focus, your ability, and I guess that's, link, that's linked with the brain, to concentrate and to take on tasks. Your sociability will also go through shifts. Your digestion will also go through shifts. Literally how your skin glows and how shiny your hair is and how white the whites of your eyes are will change. And this is all to do with the fact that we have rising and dipping and moving hormones throughout the cycle as our body is going through different changes. 
So I will get to why working out with your cycle, well, I'm telling you why, how you can work out in line with your hormonal cycle in just a moment. But first, let's actually just talk a little bit about the cycle and what your four phases are. The first phase I'll talk about is your menstrual phase. So this is where you're bleeding. It could be anywhere from two to five or seven days depending on your own cycle, but generally like two to five days. Once your bleeding has finished, you move into the follicular phase. This is the phase where it's like springtime, reset. You're literally in a more kind of open and you're, as your hormones are rising, your energy is rising state. And from that state also, your body is getting ready to release another egg in order to wait to get implanted. Now, that's what your biology is doing. You may be like, oh no, no, I, that's not what my intention is. Yes, I get that. But your biology is doing that. It's getting ready for ovulation. So that comes after the follicular phase. Follicular phase can last, I think, from, I think it's around seven-ish days. And then your ovulatory phase is generally around three to four. I may not be correct with these exact length of times, so, I'm sorry, bear with me. I'm not looking at notes, I'm doing this from memory, but I'm more just wanting to talk about the actual phases and how they're different. Ovulatory phase, your hormones have gone chum, skyrocketed, especially your tes testosterone, which makes you feel pretty sexual and bold and confident and like driven. And generally that's biology putting you in a state of attracting the right partner to get them to implant you, to procreate. Your biology wants that. <laughs> so after ovulation, your body will then be waiting for said sperm to implant, um, impregnate, to merge with your uh, ovary, but, or your ovum, but if that doesn't happen, then your hormones start to slowly dip down, slowly crash, slowly go all the way down until your lining starts to shed and you bleed again in your menstrual cycle. Your menstrual cycle, uh, sorry, your men menstrual phase, so menstruation in bleeding will be all the way down here. Your hormones are very, very low. Your energy is generally lower. You're more susceptible to be very emotional, triggered, cloudy, internal really is the feeling. Okay, so we have four phases, but we're gonna split those four phases up into two sections. <laughs> I don't know why I did that so weird. Two sections. We have, I'm just going to call them um, first half, second half in terms of how I speak about them. So we'll talk about the first half as the more energetic half. So think about like your body is reset, you're in the follicular phase, so you've just stopped bleeding and ovulatory. Those two phases, you have more energy and it's like spring and summer when we talk about seasons with your cycle. You want to eat a little bit more lighter. You don't feel as hungry. Why is that? Your metabolism is actually slower. So when it comes to working out, working out more intensely or maybe for a longer period or maybe kind of doing more than one workout a day if you really feel up to it and it feels good and it's coming from a healthy place, is going to feel good in this time. Also, it will help you make your metabolism move a little bit faster by giving that push of exercise. If you do things like high intensity interval training, now is the time to do it in your follicular phase and in your ovulatory phase. The second half of your cycle, your metabolism actually ramps up you're more hungry, your resting metabolic rate, so what you burn just naturally before you do anything, is much higher. So you can burn up to, depending on your body, um, I think it was up to like 180 calories more just by doing nothing, simply because your body is going through a lot of changes and you're bleeding. So, and you're getting ready to bleed as well. So your luteal phase, your menstrual phase, when your hormones go down, your metabolism's already quite fast and your energy is a little bit low. You don't need to go for all the hard, crazy workouts. Not just you don't need to, it's not going to serve you. 
If you do a high intensity interval training or a really long intense exercise um, throughout all of this, you're not taking rest and you don't slow it down as your body is wanting to slow down, it's giving you that uh, signal, then what can actually happen for some women is it will put you into a stress mode. So your cortisol levels, your stress hormone levels will ramp up very fast and you can actually go into like fat storage mode where your body is holding on. That is not good. And also those that stress hormone running through your body so much can also trigger things like anxiety. So it's not helpful for you to actually be doing the more intense workouts in the second half of the cycle, the luteal and the menstrual phase. Tone it down. Go for long walks. If you want to do weights, you can do weights, do them slower or lighter. Do some different exercise classes, maybe do a dance class. If you need to leave a class early, don't beat yourself up, do that. If you want to take more rest days, do some light yoga. When I bleed the first second day, I don't really exercise and then I'll do some stretching. I may, if the cramps are really intense, again, I get in intense cramps because my hormones aren't balanced just yet. Um, I'll be going much slower and I may still go for a walk to help with cramps because exercise can help, but I definitely don't go hard. I'm not doing this to lose weight. I'm not doing this to, I mean, that's, yeah, one of the main things. I'm not doing it to lose weight, like trying to work out in line with my cycle for my metabolism purposes. Um, I definitely don't want to be like doing lots of exercise and be putting on weight randomly. That would be strange um, because I'm also eating very healthy and, you know, my body's at a healthy weight right now. I'm really happy with her just feeling so powerful and strong, but also like juicy and full. But I'm doing it really to support my energy levels. Also in this book that I read and in the study is if you have a history of hormonal imbalance, then it generally won't serve you to work out more than 30 minutes. I was marathon training last year. I was running for about two and a half hours for a training run. Um, I'm not doing that now. My runs are 20 minutes. Um, I don't go for as many runs. My workouts can go longer than 30 minutes sometimes, but I'm taking a whole lot more rest. So, yeah, I hope this helps you. If it's really interesting to you and you want to learn more, I'll put the book and Elisa's work down in the caption. I've just, I've listened to this book so far two and a half times. I've listened to it on um, audiobook and it's extremely helpful when it comes to nutrition and supporting your body in that way as well. I can say that this is the most balanced, still imbalanced, but the most balanced my hormonal cycle has been since ever. Like I got my period when I was 15. I went on the pill, maybe two periods in, I went on the pill. So I didn't even get a chance to balance my hormones properly, like to set up my hormonal cycle. When I went off the pill five years later, I was very underweight. And I talk about this story a little bit more in my other videos. So since then, six and a half years went by, I was not bleeding at all. I never had a period again. And then in the past three years, I bled maybe a handful of times until the start of this year, where I've so far this year, even though it's October, and I know this might sound like, oh, that's crazy, out of 10 months, you've only had four periods. I've only had four periods, but they have been one month and then the next month, it was exactly 28 days. And then the other two periods were exactly like, it skipped a month and then went to the next month, it skipped a month and went to the next month. I see that as great progress. I am working with my hormones in many different ways. And I know that shifting my nutrition and my exercise is really helping. So I hope this helped you. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I may know the answer or I'll point you to where the answer is. 
and if you liked this video and you want to stay in the conversation of all things Juicy Feminine, then subscribe, like the video, share it. I would so appreciate that support to get this work out into the world so more women know these magical things about their magical selves. Okay, much love. Mwah.